Hello, cruel world. My name is Dr. Shaham Das. I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist, ISS, mentally disordered offenders for a living so that you don't have to. One tragic but fascinating case that really caught my eye is the case of Chris Watts. He shockingly killed his pregnant wife and his two children in August 2018. So as a consultant forensic psychiatrist, as I said, I assess mentally disordered offenders and I, in my profession, my um, clinical experience informs my videos. And I have a healthy, how do I put the skepticism, I think that's a polite way of saying it, of people who make videos on this topic but do not have the credentials. So this video that you're watching is my critique of Dr. Grande's video on Chris Watts. And basically he's got some very simple psychoanalysis completely wrong and that's what this video is about. Now previously I've made videos about my issues with non-qualified YouTubers making videos without explaining their lack of expertise and I really want to emphasize that. It's, that is the thing that bothers me, it's when people like Dr. Grande misrepresent themselves and their expertise. So I just want to be crystal clear, anybody is allowed to make videos for YouTube, obviously. I don't own YouTube, I'm not in charge of the world, at least not yet anyway. My issue is when people make clinical mistakes and misinform the general public. Now I've thrown shade on Dr. Grande before, um, I'll put links into my previous videos, and I'll also put links into the video that I'm critiquing in this episode. Uh, basically my point that I've made in the other videos is that he calls himself Dr. Grande, he calls his channel Dr. Grande, he talks about psychiatric and psychological uh, analysis of various perpetrators, but that is not what his background is. In fact, his um, his uh, his expertise, his PhD, is in counsellor education, but that's not what his videos are about. So I think he infers passively that he's an expert in those areas, and he's not. Now, I made those disc videos. Many people agreed with me. Many people said they didn't know that he was a psychiatrist or a psychologist that assumed this. Many people disagreed with me, which is fine. They said that they believe he knows what he's talking about. So. I've been making these wild accusations, it's time for me to put my money where my mouth is. So I wanted to give a specific example of a case where he has made a mistake due to his lack of expertise, so I'm critiquing a video he did called Chris Watts, Psychopathy, Narcissism, Rage, Infidelity and Murder. It came out on the 28th of March 2019 and has had almost 2 million views, which I have to say, I can't hate on that, that is impressive. Link to the original video below, but as I say, it is flawed in many ways. So this is a shocking but fascinating case. As I said, he killed his, uh, Chris Watts killed his wife and two kids in August 2018. For me personally, as a forensic psychiatrist, what, what interests me are the characteristics, the, the personality traits of the perpetrator, Chris Watts. So I'm gonna tell you briefly about the background of the story, then Dr. Grande's clinical diagnoses and my critique of this. So Chris Watts was a seemingly happily married man in his early 30s and he had an affair around June 2018 with Nicole Kessinger who was around 30 at the time. Not Nicole Scherzinger, shouldn't be mistaken for her who let's face it a lot of men would actually kill for her. So Watts and Kessinger were sending each other sexy photos, other messages, meanwhile uh, what's his marriage with the eventual victim, his wife, Shannon Watts, was breaking down and there was like this distance forming between them. So into August, the victim, Shannon, started telling some of her friends that Chris Watts seemed a bit kind of cold, a bit distant towards her. She actually wrote, she actually drafted various letters for Chris uh, telling about their relationship and wanting to reconcile this. And we know this because she's spoken to friends about this and she's actually showed her friends some of these letters. Meanwhile, Chris Watts spends a lot of time secretly writing, uh, sorry, lots of time secretly spending away with his wife, having an affair with Kessinger's. He starts acting cold and indifference towards Shannon. He starts showing her a lack of affection. So on the day of the murder, murders, I should say, which is the 13th of August, 2018, Shannon had come home in the early hours of the morning because she'd been away on a business trip and she came in, she came at home, they had sex, the couple, and then she fell asleep. Then apparently an argument ensued when they both woke up in the morning, and Chris Watts allegedly denied having the affair, though stated that he wanted the marriage to end. And Shannon, who, as I said, was pregnant, she was 15 weeks pregnant at the time, apparently got upset, she started crying, and she said to him that he would never see the kids again. 
Later, shortly afterwards, Chris Watts stated that he strangled his wife to death over the space of a few minutes. And he felt like the idea was planted in his mind and he had no control over it. Now, I will come back onto this, but I think this is really potentially significant because it's a classic sign of psychosis. It's known as thought insertion. I will come back onto that. As this happened, one of the daughters walked in and then Chris Watts puts his wife body in the back of his pickup truck. And along with his daughters, he then drove 45 minutes to a work site and then he buried his wife and then he smothers his own daughters. His daughters are called Celeste and Bella and he puts their body in an oil tank. Now I have to say, I've assessed hundreds of mentally disordered offenders in my career and this has got to be one of the most just mind-blowingly horrific and darkest acts I've ever even heard of. To me, it's unfathomable. What he did to his children are unfathomable. I mean, no way excusing what he did to his wife, but I think some people watching this video would probably agree you can at least understand some of the thought processes that would have led to this if they've had arguments with their partners, etc., etc. But the children, I mean, they're so defenseless, they're vulnerable. By the way, on a separate note, I've done a video about my most personal shocking case. It's a young girl called Yasmin, not her real name, who I assessed and I gave evidence in a murder trial, who did something equally as horrific. Out of the blue, she smothered and killed her own nephew. But crucially, Yasmin was really mentally ill at the time. She was suffering from these delusions. She genuinely believed that her nephew had these demons inside of him and that she needed to do this to, uh, to like save him from the devil, from the afterlife. Uh, in hell. So there's a big difference between her and, and Chris Watts, who had much more selfish motivations, which we'll come on to. Anyway, check out my video on Yasmin. Always be blogging. Links will be in the description. So afterwards, Chris Watts was pretty callous in his actions. So for example, within hours of committing these horrific murders, he was texting his girlfriend. He was texting a realtor, which is also known as a state agent in the UK. Um, so different name, same great taste, I imagine. It's just as popular in the States as they are in the UK. Chris Watts was interrogated. If you get the chance to see the footage of that, you should. It was very clever. The interrogators basically pressurised him and bullied, bullied him into confessing. And he confessed to their murder on the 15th of August, 2018. Okay, so that is all the background to put it into context. Moving on to Dr. Grande's analysis. So Dr. Grande did the background, the timeline, and all the facts, so, which I've summarized for you. He explained them very well. I suppose if I was going to have to compliment Dr. Grande, I would say that he's exceptionally gifted at reading out factual material. So as always in his video, he said, reminder here, I'm not diagnosing, I'm merely speculating. Sorry, but that's absolute bull crap. Come on. You're, you're speculating on what be might be happening in a scenario like this. What other scenarios are there like this? What other situations are there where a man kills his pregnant wife and two kids so that he can carry on having an affair? We all know that you're actually diagnosing on this scenario, which is fine. There's not a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. But don't piss in my pocket and tell me it's raining, Dr. Grande. Okay. So I mentioned before that Chris Watts stated in his trial that he felt like the idea was implanted into his mind and he had no control over it. So this is an absolute classic sign of psychosis. It's known as thought insertion. So just very briefly, psychosis is like a period of mental illness. And typical symptoms include hallucinations, such as hearing voices, or delusions, which are fixed, unshakable beliefs that don't come from an understandable place. So typical delusions I see when I do my criminal court work as an expert witness might be people believing they're being followed or that people are poisoning them or harming them, or you know they're being watched by the FBI. So sometimes they preemptively attack other people. This symptom that I'm talking about, thought insertion, is not one of the, one of the more common symptoms of psychosis, but it is pathonomic. What that means is, is that it's the first rank um, symptom of schizophrenia. It strongly suggests that the sufferer has schizophrenia. So I wanna be crystal clear here. I do not think that Chris Watts was psychotic because he didn't have any of the other associated symptoms, such as voices, delusions, didn't have a family history, didn't have the cognitive or functional decline. Plus his actions were, however extreme they appeared to us, they were goal directed, they were purposeful. If that goal is to spend your life with another woman, they were not random and they weren't insensible. So I don't think he was psychotic. Either he had a strong impulse to do his evil deeds, a voluntary impulse, I, I would really stress, but it was so strong that he felt it was implanted, or more likely, in my opinion, he was basically lying. 
he was exaggerating, he was trying to decrease his criminal culpability, he was trying to get some sympathy, some empathy from the judge by saying that he was kind of forced to do it. So that's my opinion on the whole thought insertion thing. However, the very fact that Dr. Grande didn't pick up on this to me is astounding. You're trying to do a psychoanalysis of somebody's actions during a horrific crime and I guess what I'm saying is that if I'm a forensic psychiatrist and if he was a true forensic psychiatrist, he would have picked up on it and it would have been extremely relevant to rule out. Like that's, you cannot ignore that, what I'm saying is. What is what I'm saying? So Dr. Grande proposed that Chris Watts had psychopathy and narcissism. And admittedly, there were some very cold calculated actions taken by Chris Watts immediately after the killing. As I said, texting, up his, uh, texting his girlfriend, he was even looking for like holiday deals on group bonds. Now, Dr. Grande doesn't use the words that he's diagnosing Chris Watts with psychopathy, but he says there's a strong connection with psychopathy, which, I mean, what does that mean? What's a strong connection? You either have a diagnosis or you don't. I think it's beating around the proverbial bush, like that time your ex-girlfriend said that you had a strong connection with body odor and then she dumped you. We know what that means, dude, you stink. So Dr. Grande went on, through, went, go, went on to go through many of the features of psychopathy and discussed whether Chris Watts had these or not. So this is where things get interesting. This is the crux of my issue with Dr. Grande's false psychoanalysis. Basically what I'm saying is, as an expert who's actually diagnosed psychopaths for a living, Dr. Grande has made numerous mistakes. To his credit, he got a couple of things right. I suppose even a broken clock tells the right time twice a day. Anybody can win a lottery. You can put a cat in an oven and that don't make it a biscuit. Sorry. But he got many things wrong. <clears throat> the basis is, uh, of his mistakes, I think, is that he defined a lot of the characteristics of a psychopath around that one day and those events of the killings that Chris Watts committed. So even though what Chris Watts did was horrific, even though I'm not trying to excuse it, that does not make Chris Watts a psychopath. So very quickly, a psychopath is somebody who is got antisocial personality disorder. So they're aggressive, impulsive. They don't care about the rights of others. They don't care about the law. They don't learn from their mistakes. Plus, they are manipulative, deceitful, cunning, cunning and charming. They have to be those things. Otherwise, they're not a psychopath. They still might be horrible people that have done horrible things, but they're not clinical psychopaths. So Dr. Grande said that Chris Watts was violating society's norm. But that is supposed to be a long-term issue. That describes somebody that's quite criminalistic in their outlook and parasitic in their lifestyle. So a typical psychopath will have lots of different types of defeat, de deceit and offending, not just somebody that does some very bad things in one day, like Chris Watts did. Think about it logically. If, if everybody who committed a murder or any kind of serious crime would be a psychopath, by Dr. Grande's definition, which would kind of make the term, the clinical term psychopath, not particularly helpful. It would make it redundant. And the other thing I wanted to point out is that it's, it's about society's norms as opposed to necessarily offending. So what I'm saying is there are some people who are psychopaths who are not offenders, such as CEOs. So they will, they're usually very successful in the corporate world because they will stab you in the back, they will shit in your cereal if necessary so they can get their promotion. That's why they're so successful. They don't have any guilt, any empathy. By the way, I've done another video on the difference between psychopaths and sociopaths. Always be plugging in case you're interested. Similarly, Dr. Grande made comments that were pretty much the same on irresponsibility. So that is a feature of, of psychopathy. But again, it's not relevant because Chris Watts wasn't generally irresponsible. I mean, he did support his wife and children overall throughout his life. Now, I'm not saying for a second that he was a good father or a good husband. Obviously, he wasn't because of what he ended up doing. That's like saying that Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Epstein was a good host. But generally, Chris Watts, up until that point throughout his life, had lived up to his responsibility. So to put it in another context, true psychopaths sponge off other people. They're parasitic. In fact, one of the items on the PCLR, so the PCLR is a psychopathy checklist, uh, is exactly that, a parasitic lifestyle. So it's like a checklist that's used formally to diagnose psychopaths. I've used it many times on real patients when they've been detained under criminal sections. It's got like 20 items, and depending on, on what score you get on the presence of certain items, you get a score. If you wanna know how it all works, I've actually done a video on Anna Delvey from Inventing Anna on Netflix. Life is meant for living in there. So if you're interested in that, watch that video. I'll put the links in the description. Always be plugging. And a psychopath isn't somebody who puts time in and effort in to build up a career or looks towards the future. 
and what was did do those things so he wasn't a psychopath is what i'm saying similarly in terms of impulsivity dr grande says that impulsivity was um, was present and there was impulsivity in the murder i'll give him that but it, it has to be impulsivity over one's lifespan so to put it into context, many non-psychopaths do things impulsively, occasionally, like from drug abuse to that time you dyed your hair to look like Eminem, but you ended up looking like Ellen DeGeneres. Don't deny it, we both know it happened. But my point is, is that people, non-psychopaths do those things occasionally. Chris Watts did something very impulsive on one instance, but psychopaths are generally impulsive as a lifestyle. They can't plan ahead. They can't have solid goals because of their impulsivity. They always get into trouble regularly, frequently. These are all items in the psychopathy checklist. So Chris Watts was not those things. Similarly, with poor behavioral control, Dr. Grande said that this was present. So the difference, to, poor behavioral control and uh, impulsivity often get conflated. Impulsivity means that you have to do something there and then on the spot and you can't control that impulse, the compulsion to do it then. Poor behavioral controls is more kind of, it's not about doing something suddenly in the moment, but it's still about not being able to control your behavior. So say, for example, somebody who drinks too heavily but knows they drink too heavily. When they take a drink, it's not impulsive because they plan it, but they still can't control their behavior. But crucially, I can't stress this en enough, for a psychopath, it has to be across their entire lives. And I don't think that was the case with Chris Watts. I think there was at best mixed evidence Aside from the murders, she did, he was having an affair, so you could see that was poor. You could say at a stretch that's poor behavioural control, but it's not a lifestyle kind of thing. Sorry, just adjusting things on my computer. Okay, another huge mistake from Dr. Grande's analysis with criminal versatility. This is a huge one for me. He said that Chris Watts was criminally versatile because he committed two types of killings. One was the impulsive killing of his wife, and the other were the more calculated killings of his daughter. And that is, that what he said is correct, but that is not, not, not criminal versatility. Criminal versatility in a psychopath is many lots of different types of offending over their lifespan, from fraud to violence to intimidation to, you know, sexual offences to shoplifting to habitual lying over a long period of time. And Chris Watts didn't have that. So he might have had some, pers some psychopathic personality characteristics on that day, but those are not lifelong traits. Right, moving on, Dr. Grande talks about the cause of the killing and that basically that Chris Watts was having an affair and I think he got this correct, so well done you, Dr. Grande. Pretty obvious, but there you go. Eventually, 21 minutes into his video, Dr. Grande finally makes a good clinical point, which is that fantasy drove the entire offences of, from Chris Watts' perspective. And this is the main factor. This is by far the most important part of Chris Watts' psychoanalysis, in my opinion. So in my view, he had this fantasy life in his head where he was living with another woman, Kessinger. He had a whole different life with her, a whole different experience. In fact, they even sent text messages to each other pretending that she was the mother of his children. So I think over time, this fantasy life grew and grew and grew and he became more emotionally attached to it. And over time, he disassociated himself, detached himself from actual reality. And I think... He was actually gutless and quite afraid, and he was pressurized by Shannon into staying into this relationship. Chris Watts did not want to be in that relationship. In his warped mind, he felt trapped. He had two kids, he had a third one on the way, but he didn't have the balls to stand up for himself. He didn't have the balls to do anything about his relationship as it was deteriorating. So the point I'm trying to make is this is actually the opposite of what a psychopath would do. They would be the most dominating. They would be the most powerful one in the relationship. So I'm not victim blaming, by the way. I don't think Shannon did anything wrong. I'm just saying that when you look at Chris Watts' perspective, it is not that of a psychopath. So Chris Watts made an impulsive decision in the context of an argument and getting enraged. As to why he made this decision, I don't think anyone can really answer that question, but we can say it's not related to mental illness or a mental disorder. So moving on, Dr. Grande said that narcissism was a big part of his psychoanalysis and I would maybe at a stretch agree with that but he failed to make a very simple clinical point which is that narcissism itself rarely leads to offending or violence unless it's in the context of psychopathy and there's a big overlap and as I said I don't think Chris Watts was a psychopath. Another reason is that psychopaths are quite charming, they're manipulative. Chris Watts didn't have any of these features during his trial. Compared to Ted Bundy for example, he charmed reporters, he charmed police, that is what a psychopath is like, not a sort of slightly timid, shy man who made an impulsive decision like Chris Watts. 
So to conclude, this whole video is me explaining why I have an issue with Dr. Grande and his lack of expertise. See my other videos to go into details of what I think about him and the conclusions he makes. Just really want to make a point again that he's allowed to make videos, but because of what he calls himself, Dr. Grande, and his channel, Dr. Grande, he does not make it clear that he has qualifications in counsellor education. So I want to be crystal clear, I have no problem with anybody making YouTube videos. Everybody's allowed to, everybody's welcome to have a different opinion than me. In fact, I like it when people have different opinions because it just kind of makes us all learn. My issue is misrepresenting his expertise. He, in my view, should say at the beginning of his videos that his opinions are only based on clinical experience. And his about section on his channel, he does say that he's got a PhD in counsellor education. He did not have that when I made my very first video and then it mysteriously appeared after I put that video out. <clears throat> Uh, so before then he was completely misrepresenting himself I think I think that he should explain that he doesn't have that his opinions like when he gives opinions on Chris Voss being a psychopath are not based in clinical experience that he has no training or education of working with mentally disordered offenders of diagnosing psychopaths because it all falls down the card the house of cards come crashing down when a real expert examines it and I've got a problem with that. If, if in exact cases like this where people get it wrong and they're very popular videos, it might miseducate people like Lauren Hill. It might make people, it might give people the wrong impression of what psychopathy is. So with these videos that I've made, I've got lots of people defending him, which is absolutely fine. Some people like his videos. That is absolutely fine. Everyone's allowed to have their opinion. This is just mine. However, what's interesting for me, I mentioned this briefly before, is I've had at least over 200, probably around 300 comments in all my videos saying that they assumed that Dr. Grande was a psychiatrist or a psychologist because of the way he presents himself, because he calls himself Dr. Grande because he makes videos on psychology and psychiatry. So that kind of proves my point, and that's my exact point. If people generally don't know that, then by definition he's being uh, misleading. Anyway, I've draveled on enough. Let me know what you think, dear viewers. Am I being pity? Do you think I'm right or wrong about my analysis of Chris Watts? Do you think he wasn't a psychopath? If you agree with me and you share my frustrations about Dr. Grande, do you think he's misrepresenting this information? Or do you think it's part and parcel of a nebulous dark world of YouTube? Am I being petty? Let me know in the Shabon Shmection below. Check out some of my other videos on this topic. I've done a whole se series on what psychopaths are, difference between psychopaths and sociopaths, all in the links below. The PCLR, the psych Psychopathy Checklist, I've done a formal test on Anna Delvey, as I mentioned. Did another one, Michael Jordan. If you're interested in the outcomes, go chiggity, 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 check it out. Until next time, buy my goddamn book, stay euthymic, and do not forget, I love you.